start off with, what we're going to tie is this, what I call a wobbling fry. And the reason I call it a wobbling fry is, as you can notice, it has kind of a taper. It's fat in the head and then comes back. So when you twitch it through the water, it goes like this. It has a lot of movement to it. The material is something new. Well, it's, it's not new. It's something you can find at any arts and crafts store. And it's macrame yarn. But what we're going to do is get it down fine like this. So what you need to do is go buy some macrame yarn. It's out of a polypropylene. And I like to buy it in white because that way I can come back and use a magic marker and I can color these things any color that I want to. What you do is just cut it up into certain lengths like this and just unravel it. Then you just come back with a comb and just comb through it. You want to straighten all this stuff out. I mean, this is the cheaper way of doing it, but if you want to use a different material, the very first material I ever tied this fly out of was called crinkle zelon. It, uh, and that stuff comes in a variety of different colors, plus it's something that you can dye, unlike this polypropylene. But that's, that's, how, that's the material that we're going to be using for this fly. And then we have some eyes on here, and there's a little bit of crystal flash in there, and then the hook is a 105 hook. Let me show you how I'm tying this thing. So we'll grab our hook, and we'll insert that in here. Notice that's a short shank hook. And then I'm going to take just monofilament thread, and we'll get some of this on here. Now we're ready for some of that combed out polypropylene, or macrame yarn. Now we'll take, take this out of the bag here. And I've already combed a bunch of this stuff out. So we'll peel some off here. And we'll even up one end of it. Snip it off. And we're just going to lash that down right on top of the hook shank here. Just like so. And then we'll extend it back to however long you want to make, make your fly be. And we'll hold on to that and set that to the side. Now we're going to tie in some crystal flash. And this particular color is pearl. And as you can tell, we're using almost all translucent or clear material here, all synthetic. That's a little trick that I learned a long time ago from John Betts, because if we tie them all white, we can come back at any time and make them whatever color that we want to. So we'll just lash some of this on there. And we'll make it just a little bit longer than that wing. Then we'll take that other hunk of yarn and tie it in right on top of that. Just like so. Cut that to length. Now there's our tail. Now for the body, what we'll do is we'll take some more of that yarn that's been all combed out, and we'll grab a hunk of that out of there. And we'll just start, we'll cut off a hunk. Just like what you do with wool for wool head sculpins or something similar, I just stick it right down the middle of the hook shank so it extends back into the wing a little bit. Just take two turns of thread and cinch down. Pull back, wrap in front, cut another hunk of the yarn, slip it right on the top. What you're doing is just tying this down right in the middle of it, cinching down, and coming forward. You want that material to kind of lay back a little bit. And we're just going to keep repeating the, this process until we get up to the hook eye. And what we're doing is creating a body and wing. And, 
And by doing this all in white, like I said, we can come back and make it any color that we want to. Whether it be a, something like a black nose daze or a little rainbow or even something like a fat head minnow. Wrap in front. And we're getting close there. And by tying it this way, I mean, it makes a real durable fly, too. Not only is this fly good for trout or bass, but it's also real good for pike, too. The nice thing about using this for pike, since it is all synthetic and real durable, it doesn't have that tendency to be chewed up. Now we're about ready to whip finish it off. And we'll just take our thread off here. And that's all the tying procedure. Now I just kind of run my scissor point through here and unloosen any tangles that I might have. Or if you have a fine tooth comb like a mustache comb, you can run that through there as well. Now to trim this, let me get that out of the eye there. I just start at the eye. I'm going to kind of round it off towards the back. So I'll snip at an angle and then come back and then cut that wing at an angle. Then I just kind of round it off, making kind of a fat head at up front here. You know, and depending on how big you want these, I mean, you can make this thing just as fat as you want to. And then I just come in on the between the hook gap and just trim it flush, just like so. And if you want, you can take it out of the vise, and it just makes it a little bit easier to trim it. Just like so. I'm going to do a little more trimming here. Trim that wing. Cut it back at an angle. And we'll just stick it in the vise. And we'll do a little bit more. That made it just a little bit too fat, but that's all right. It'll still work. Just like so. Now to make sure that we have the, the biggest hook gap that we possibly can, what I'll do is I'll take a lighter And you can either leave the fly in the vise or take it out. I'm just going to kind of melt the underside. That way, that way you just open up that hook gap a whole lot more. And if you want to tie these on really big hooks for pike and bass or even salt water, the stinger, stinger hooks work real well because then you have that nice big gap in there. Well, you get the idea. You can trim this however much you want to until you get the desired shape. And now we're ready to add some eyes to it. What I'm going to do is take some of these solid plastic eyes. And these have the stem on them. I know you can buy the ones that have the self-adhesive back on them. And we're going to use those here in a little bit on another fly. For this particular fly, I like that little stem on there. All I'll do is I'll come in and cut that stem off, set that to the side, and I'll do another one. Snip it off. Now I have my set of eyes. Now, to get these eyes glued on here, I'm going to take some goop. Goop's a good product for attaching eyes to your flies. 
All right, do just squeeze a little bit of this out of here. And I just kind of glob it on on one side. And then I'll do the same thing on the side away from me. Let's see if I can get it, enough in there. Just like so. And you want to cover up your goop. Now all you got to do is just make sure you don't drop your eye and stick it right where you want it, right in that glue. Now push it, push it right in there. Let that goop form all the way around it. Just like so. And then just kind of pinch them. And if you have too much goop, that's the nice thing about it. You can come back now and just peel it off. Just like so. Now once you got your eyes on there, you can do a little additional trimming if you need to. Just get in that minnow shape. And you can make them any shape that you want to. Now that we have that all done, the only thing left to do is start coloring it. I think we'll make this kind of like a little brown trout. Now we'll start off with some yellow. And we'll just do the underside here first. Gotta make it yellowish. Like so. And then we'll take some tan. Go over the top of that. And you just make this fly represent any type of mental imitation you can think of. And we'll take a little bit darker brown. I always like the back to be darker than the rest of the body. Just like so. And maybe a little orange stripe right down the middle of it. Just like that. And if you want, you can even add some little black polka dots. And to do that, you just hold the material tight put some dots in there just like so and there you have it there's a wobble and fry and you can spend as much time as you want on here trimming it really a good little fly Really a good little little fly.